All right, so suppose we want to find the volume under the plane x plus y plus z equals one in the first octant. Okay, so first octant, that means where all variables are positive, right? And so it turns out that the plane we're interested in kind of zaps through and just knacks off a corner of the first octant right around the origin. So it looks something like this. Okay, so what are the steps that we go through in, in setting up the integral to solve this? Well, first off, we're going to be thinking of um, this, this plane as being the graph of some function in this quadrant. Um, so the value above, oh, let me pick a better color here. Something horrible like this line. Okay, so the function being given by the height of the surface above that particular point, right? So we're gonna be thinking of um, z as a function of x and y. Okay, that's something about how we're going to figure out what our integrand is going to be. And so then you see, okay, so we're going to have to integrate that function then uh, over this domain down here. So that's going to be our domain. All right, okay, so how do we think about this? Well, um, I can see two parts of this. I can see that I've got the x-axis coming down this way, and I've got the y-axis going out this way. What about that diagonal line cutting across there? All right, so the, to figure out where that is, we see that the plane x plus y plus z equals one intersects um, the, the xy plane which is z equals zero um, <clears throat> along, and then you say, okay, so where are these gonna intersect? Well, the intersection is gonna be formed by looking at where both of these equations are satisfied simultaneously. And so the easiest thing to do is to take one of these equations and substitute it into the other so that's going to be x plus y plus 0 equals 1. And so then we can rewrite this equation, whichever way we like, depending on how we're going to set up the integral. So let's see. So now we know that our domain is going to be this portion of the x, y plane. So this is where x is equal to 1, and this is where y is equal to 1. This line right here is x plus y equals 1. And now you have your choice to make, right? So we can figure out how to set it up doing dx first or dy first. Hey, let's do both. All right. So if we're going to do both, then let's see if we do... Um, if we're going to do dy first, redraw our domain. Okay, so if we're going to do um, dy first, then that means we're going to be looking for an upper bounding curve and a lower bounding curve. And so we're going to be um, starting here on this curve. So this is where y equals 0. And then we're going to stop when we get, so we're going to, you know, starting at some given x, we're going to go up until we hit this point right here. So our stopping curve is going to be, ah, I sort of messed that up. Our stopping curve is going to be this line right along here. And so uh, we want to think of this as where y equals something. So we take this equation right here and we solve it for where y equals and we see that it's one minus x. Okay, and so we're gonna be integrating from zero to one minus x, zero to one minus x, zero to one minus x, bing, 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 bing. And so we need to pick up all of those blue slices. So let's see, first things first. Um, <coughs> we have our domain going from y equals zero up to y equals one minus x. And for our 
integrand, if we go back to this 3D picture here, what is this integrand? Well, that's what we get by just solving the equation for um, this plane here, this diagonal plane, in terms of z. So we say, okay, I take my surface and I solve for z, and I see z equals 1 minus x minus y. So that's going to be our integrand. 1 minus x minus y. And that's the thing that we just integrated with respect to dy from y equals 0 to 1 minus x. All right. Oh. And so then, so that's actually going to be, let's see, for a fixed value of x, let's see if I could draw this, what we just picked up. So if I fix a value of x here on the axis, then that's going to be giving me the area. Oh, that was terrible. Of this little triangular slice going through right there. And of course, we'll, we'll have different um, triangles depending on which value of x we took. So we'll have different values for the area of that triangular slice. It'll vary with x, but that's fine. We can integrate all these slices together, the lime and the blue and all the rest, and get the whole volume for that region. And so in order to collect all those slices here, that corresponds back in this picture of getting the first slice right here and the last slice right here. So we're going from this one where x is equal to 0 to this one that just knacks it off at a little point here where x is equal to 1. So we go x equals 0 to x equals 1 dx. And there we go. Now, by the way, um, I like to write these little y equals and x equals things in here just to kind of clarify what's going on. Um, you may or may not see that in any given example in the book. They, they might just keep it simple and just say 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x, 1 minus x minus y, dy, dx. I will never mark off points. Um, this is, I mean, generally the preferred way to write it, but it's really helpful to kind of keep track mentally of like what your variables are when you're setting it up. So I totally encourage you to use this notation for right now. You don't have to, it's not required, but think about it, especially because the next one we're going to do is triple integrals. And then we've got three variables to keep track of, and it's really kind of helpful. Okay, so that was all about setting things up for doing dy first, but we could also have set it up for doing dy second. So let's see about looking at dx first. Now, this one is um, pretty simple. It, it actually doesn't really matter which way you set it up, but we'll see that for some examples, um, it makes a huge deal of difference if uh, you set it up one way or the other. It can be much more difficult if you do it the quote unquote wrong way. So this time, let's look at doing the dx integration first. So we'll be starting, so uh, uh, we'll be looking at slices that pass through from left to right instead of from bottom to top. And we'll see that they first hit here on this curve and then they exit when they hit this curve over here. So this will be our start zone. And so that's y equals zero. And then um, this will be our ending curve and that will be y equals, and then once again, you go back to the defining curve and use this to calculate. Oops, make it a little longer. Um, so that's going to be, oh, I'm sorry. I, I totally screwed up. I, I was saying the wrong thing. This first one, that's not where y equals zero. That's where x equals zero. And this red one here is we're now looking, we're going in the x direction. So that's where x equals, and we have to solve um, this equation for x now. We see it's, it's one minus y. My apologies for that. 
Okay, and so we'll start at x equals zero and go to x equals one minus y here and here and here and here and here and here and here. And we start with the, the very first slice down here on the bottom, which is where y is equal to zero. And the last place we clip it is right here at the top at y equals one, where we just hit it right at that single point. So we need to pick up all the blue slices between the orange lines. So we're gonna be collecting the same integrand, one minus x minus y. And now we're gonna go from x equals zero up to x equals one minus y, dx. And that's gonna give us the length of one slice, or sorry, the, the um, area over one slice. And then we're gonna collect all those areas in the y direction from y equals zero to y equals one. Okay, and so that's how you'd set it up going the other direction. And, and notice, by the way, that just sort of reality check, our outer bounds of integration are going to be constants, just numbers, no x's or y's. And you can always tell whether the domain of integration is a rectangle by what's going on with these ones. And so based on the fact that we have um, something that's not a number, it's a variable, we know that it's gonna be not a rectangular domain. So this is just reflecting the fact that it's a, it's a triangular domain, not a rectangular one.